Whew. This is the first time I tried to open one of these doors. It's much harder than I expected it would be. Can we just leave these doors open? Oh, we'd be freezing then. But wait for me. Neniko slides underneath the descending door. Don't do that! That's dangerous! I grabbed the wheel to stop the door from dropping any lower. The door was just starting to move downward, so I could just I could still stop it, but I might not have been able to do so a second later. How quick are they dropping down though? You idiot leaving me behind like that. That was dangerous. You could have been sliced in half by this door. Be more careful, you were almost a Neniko sandwich. <laughs> this is another weird reference. Even if I get sliced in half and die, it'll be your fault, Ikeda. That's some really messed up logic, Neniko. I'm at a loss for words. We just go to the lounge together. The rain has made the bridge even The rain has made the bridges even wetter than before. Good. The cobblestones are rough, so it's not too slippery. The smashing rain does soak my trousers. Hmm, wet trousers. This is so cold. Hurry up and open it a bit faster, slow poke. I'm going as fast as I can. Maybe you're freezing, but I'm working up quite a sweat here. Speaking of which, that butler Vincent turned the wheel with ease. Either he's used to opening them, or he's much stronger than he looks. I've been expecting you, Mr. Higgins. Please follow me. The dining hall is this way. She's been expecting just me? Didn't she ring the other guests at all? It's weird. Or did they already come? Like, were we that slow? Didn't we... Immediately leave and stuff? and oh, whatever. Hey, Abby, could you do something about the doors at the bridge? They are ridiculously hard to open. Can't you just leave them open? The doors? That is strange. I made sure that the doors were left open before inviting our guests to come here. My sincere apologies. I will lock them in place when I open them. If the doors happen to be closed again, please let me know. Thank you, but I should not ask you to do such hard work. Think nothing of it. It is my job, after all. Abby gives me a faint smile. How wonderful, just how a mate should be. Hey, did you hear that, Neniko? You should become an apprentice. But don't shake me like that all of a sudden, will, 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 will ya? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, here we go. So this is the dining hall. Thomas is over there. Looks like nobody else has arrived yet. Mr. Higgins, this is your seat. Miss Uzumaki, please sit, sit over there. Uh, uh, eh? Oh boy, it seems that the seating order has already been decided. Neniko has difficulties eating in front of people. The seat in front of me is empty, so I could swap seats with her, or I could just let her struggle. Neniko reluctantly takes a seat. Thomas is the only other guest who has already arrived. It's a good opportunity to get some information out of him. And you were okay? It would kill time. My apologies, Thomas. I must appear I must appear a bit like a fish out of water. I was suddenly asked to become a representative, so I'm not quite used yet to this place. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. Actually, I know how you feel. I can never get used to the atmosphere here. I see, so you've been here before? Uh, um, yes, yes, that's right. He appears to be on his guard. I should make him feel at ease with small talk before trying to extract information from him. I've heard that Sir Raymond is a rather strange person. The entire building appears to have a peculiar atmosphere. I was especially surprised by that eerie painting here in the dining hall. Oh god, would you happen to know anything about it, Thomas? Well, like I said before, it's a cookie cutter shark, a small squally form shark species of the Dalatidae family. Its scientific name is Isistus brasiliensis. Danny was jabbering, even though I didn't ask her. Yes, yes, I know that, Tommy. Only making some small talk so that I can extract information from Thomas. Just bite your tongue already. I was surprised at first, but I was told that this is a painting of a shark. I don't know much about it, but Sir Raymond appears to be rather fond of that kind of shark. He sure has an unusual taste. That painting is creepy, and one could even call it demonic. Speaking of which, I heard someone mention a legendary creature here called the Demon of Shiro Nagazu Island. Wait, wh 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 who said this? Is he trying to trick him? Do you think that this, his so called demon could actually be that shark? The Demon of Shiro Nagazu Island? No, I don't know. Can't say I've ever heard of it. Huh? Thomas is clearly flustered. His face just turned red. He appears to be hiding something. However, I was not expecting that he would become this flustered. Is there something about this demon of Shiro Nagazu Island that I don't know about yet? Where did I hear about this? Where do you live, Mr. Higgins? Ha, huh, that's a totally unrelated question. Thomas is clearly trying to change the subject. Me? Brooklyn, New York. I live in a nice villa with a gorgeous night view of the Manhattan skyline. Nineko gives me a smug look. Yeah, yeah, I lied, but not completely. I can see a part of Manhattan from my office, though. Just an innocent white line. 
My, you're making me envious. I only have the opportunity to go to New York occasionally for medical conferences. Sure, it's a great city. Medical conferences? Does that mean that... Good day, Mr. Higgins. Mr. Harrington? Nanical? It appears I have arrived early. Hey, Akira. Isn't Giselle with you? Akira gives me a sour look. I'm not a child, so we are not together all the time, Mr. Higgins. For some reason, she sounds rather hostile. Maybe because I called her a fucking idiot earlier. I wonder why. Did I somehow annoy her without realizing it? I can't remember. After a moment of awkward silence, Giselle appears. Forgive my tardiness, Miss Akira. It's alright, Giselle. Did you find what you were looking for? Yes, it was inside the bag. A pistol to shoot everyone, in, including herself. A short while later, I notice Alex and Aurora sitting on their seats at the back. Alex look like, like he's, looks like he's trying to avoid the others. He tried to talk to me earlier, though. Hello, everyone. Oh, were we the last to arrive? With Jacob, Jacob and Real joining the group, all of the guests have gathered. Still, there's no sign of Sir Raymond. Hang on, there's something strange about this scene. Is there? I wonder what it is. Well, Real is looking at us for one. And there's an uneven amount of gas since we're the number nine, basically. Hmm. Never mind. It's mirroring. Like, is that. That's a, that's, a, that's a glass, but it's a window. What is unusual about this scene? Hmm. Looks like J Jacob's already holding a wine glass. The guy's a real alcoholic. See that, oh, see that everyone has gathered. Allow me to serve your meal. My master, Sir Raymond, will be joining you shortly. He won't. Hmm? As the food is being prepared, I can't help but notice that Thomas is looking at his watch anxiously. If you will excuse me for a second. Wait, I wonder where he's going. I think he's going to the bathroom. He, he was fidgeting. Any cause ability to remember, rem blah, 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 blah. remember things is impressive. However, observing people is not her strong suit. She can't even look them in their eyes, so she misses any nuances. You should pay more careful attention. Thomas kept looking at his watch. So he has something going on at a certain time. It's not much to do on this island, though. I wonder what he's up to. As if I know. I bet he's meeting someone. Meeting someone? But everyone from our group is right here. The only person missing is Sir Raymond. But I can't imagine that Thomas and Sir Raymond would be secretly meeting at this time. The food is being served, but Thomas still hasn't returned. Looks alright. Nenico doesn't seem to mind as nobody's sitting in front of her and she doesn't appear to be very fond of Thomas. Hey Nenico, your hair is so long. Where do you, where do you have it cut? Here, here, here. Akira is talking to Nenico in a slightly unpleasant way. Nenico appears to be panicking hysterically and is shaking all over. What's up with you? There's no need to panic. You'll have to forgive her. She's not much of a people person. My apologies, I wasn't aware of that. I hope you will get used to people soon. <laughs> it's like, get get well soon, Nenico. As in, I hope you will want to get used to people. <laughs> Akira appears to be quite arrogant as she speaks. Is she drinking wine? I wonder if she's drunk. Did you know, Mr. Higgins, in England, one can drink from the age of 16 years as long as there's a, there's a guardian present. Oh, I find wine to be most delightful. I'm not sure if Akira noticed my glance, but she immediately begins to talk about the drinking age of wine. <laughs> We're in Alaska, in the United States, though. The last time I heard, Alaska wasn't part of the United Kingdom. And Giselle is your guardian? Everything in moderation, I guess. C can I have some wine, too? Nenico stares at the wine glass in front of her. Not on my watch. Be a good girl and drink your grape juice instead. But meanie. Hmm. It's been a while since lunch started, but Thomas hasn't returned. No sign of Sir Raymond either. Suddenly Vincent appears, carrying a large phonograph. Yeah, a, a recording of the master of the, the mansion, I guess. Please remain seated, everyone. My master, Sir Raymond, originally intended to address all of you in person, but there's been a sudden change of, of plans. He's dead! Allow me to play his message to you on his phonograph. Record it? I wonder why Sir Raymond doesn't come himself. Sir Raymond is somewhat whimsical. It is not unusual for him. But he did invite us to come to this island, so this is probably an important message. It appears that Mr. Harrington is not here. However, I was told to proceed on time, so I will play the recording without him present. 
Everyone, you have my sincere gratitude for coming all the way to Shiranagazu Island. I wonder if the sound coming from the phonograph was distorted when it was recorded or if the phonograph is defective. There have been serious concerns about the absolute secrecy of the island. Someone has broken our pact. I cannot forgive who did this. I have discovered information, truth, traitor, if invitation letter. Hey, you've got to be kidding. I didn't understand any of that. As soon as Jacob blurts that out. Is that... There's a traitor among you. Among us. Suddenly the voice is clear as day, very different from the distorted recording that played before. The eerie tone of the voice appears to put everyone on edge. The phonograph plays an incoherent string of sounds and then stops playing. And thus concludes my master's message. Although he's trying hard not to show it, I can see that even Vincent was taken aback by the recorded message. So Raymond is really overdoing it with his jokes. A traitor among us? That's ridiculous. There's no point in having such a charade, even if it were true. Jacob mutters, his frustration clearly visible. It appears the message has ended. I shall take my leave. I wish you all a good day. Let's go, Giselle. Is there anything bad about people knowing about this island that I missed? I mean, other than this being some kind of secret millionaire's, like, buttfuck club. Akira leaves with a perplexed look on her face, Giselle scurrying after her. How about we also get out of here? Nenuko appears to be deflated by the atmosphere of this place and is tugging at my sleeve. Might be able to find out some more things if I stay here, though. What should I do? We're gonna leave. Mostly because I need to save. Yeah, let's make a quiet exit. What was that all about? And what an unpleasant atmosphere. I was talking about a traitor. Yes, it definitely felt nasty. Looks like the invitation was some kind of bait for drawing the traitor out. But I don't know. Even if there is a traitor, I don't think that he or she would be stupid enough to come to this island. I know what you mean about not coming to the island being suspicious. Did he invite everyone because of that? It's true. But the traitor could have used a representative. But with the exception of Thomas and Jacob, and all of the other guests' representatives? What kind of betrayal took place anyway? C could Mr. Higgins have been the traitor? Perhaps wrecked with guilt, he took his own life? Shh, you don't mince your words, do you? I'll admit, it lies within the realms of possibilities, but if that's the case, I'll just have to throw in the towel. However, I don't think it's possible to find out who the traitor is by asking representatives who don't know anything about this island. Could Sir Raymond have his suspicions about who the traitor might be? I have no idea. I need to clear... M oh, it's him speaking. I have no idea. I need to clear my mind. L let's just go back to our rooms. This place gives me the creeps. You're right, we should go back before continuing this conversation. Huh? Hang on. Don't tell me that door is shut again. Didn't Abby tell us that she would leave it open? I bet Akira just closed it. That sneaky little witch. <laughs> Jeez, looks like I'm going to have to, un have to turn the wheel again. Who will I, um, like, kill by doing that, I wonder. Oh, who that? What's happening? What's going on over there? Akira and Giselle, what are you doing? Something strange going on. Did she puke or something? My lady, are you alright? Hey, what's the matter? Did something happen? Uh, Akira is pale as a sheet and her eyes can't seem to focus. It appears that a person has collapsed in the corridor ahead of us. It's not a person anymore. Not a person. Who? Oh, uh, who was missing earlier? Thomas, right? Kira is muttering to herself, not a person anymore means decapacitated, right? Most likely. Something strange is going on. The corridor ahead of us, so the corridor behind this door. If you open the door, steal yourself. It's a horrific sight. Thanks for the advice. I'll keep that in mind. Just tell me there's someone dead! I leave Akira and reach for the wheel. There's something strange about all of this. I should be on my guard. Neniko, if you're scared, stay back. I don't know what we might encounter behind this door. <laughs> I'm scared. Quick, quickly open the door before I change my mind. You're very brave. All right, let's do this. I'm opening the door. Now. Any second. As soon as I open the door, a terrible stench enters my nostrils. The corridor is filled with smoke stinging my eyes. The smoke that obscures the corridor dissipates, revealing a gruesome sight. What damn what happened with him? Good grief! That man has been burned all over, he isn't breathing anymore. 
His face has been severely burned, but judging from his outfit and heavy physique, this could be Thomas. The cause of death was either suffocation or burning. This was undoubtedly caused by a fire. However, something is very strange. How can such an intense fire rage in a stone corridor? Uh, you can't be serious. I don't think I can handle this. Nenico froze up with tears in her eyes. Her words sound as harsh as usual, but I think she's really reached her limits this time and her pale cheeks tell me that she might faint at any moment. This is more than I can handle. Having seen this, I think I've outlived my usefulness. I think I'm going to fate. Good night, Moon. Nenico mutters something with a whimpering voice, wanders off and lies down in the corner of the stone bridge. Hey, you are right? I can hear loud noises coming from where Nenico is lying. What is that? What's going on? In a corridor? What is that? What's that horrible smell? Mmm. Bacon. Oh boy, this is awkward, but there may still be important evidence here. I don't want anyone disturbing the murder scene. Stand back, everyone. This murder scene must not be disturbed until my investigation has been completed. My investigation! Disturb the murder scene? What gives you the authority to say these things, Higgins? Get out of my way! Why on earth is there a dead body there? Looks like I won't be able to play this part any longer. That's what I look like? <laughs> okay. Everyone, please listen carefully. My real name is Sani Kira. Oh, dropping the act that early. I'm a detective from New York and I have come to this island for an investigation. As you will know, I have the legal authority to, to investigate and make arrests. Do I? You are to follow my instructions until the police arrive on this island. Detective? Your name is Senikita? You bastard, you faked your identity. Detective Senikita from New York? I've heard that name before. This man has ties to the Mafia and will not hesitate to use illegal means to achieve his goals. I'm certain I've seen his face in the newspaper. I'm sure of it. What? So you're a bad guy after all. In any case, I've disclosed my identity. It doesn't matter if I'm good or bad, I'm still a licensed detective. You're obliged to obey my orders on this island. As if I had to obey your orders. Alex, you better quit that hostile attitude right now if you know what's good for you. I'm gonna fucking kill you, dude! <laughs> Could you look after Neniko? Neniko? Alex glares at me, daggers coming out of his eyes. Still, he rushes to Neniko and helps us sit up. Real, could you come here? I'm sorry to drag you into this, but I need you to assist me at the burn the scene. She's gonna tamper with it. Don't trust the doctor. Don't trust. Oh, we're the nurse, I guess. But still, that's good enough in the mystery, I guess. I'm an internist. Oh no, internist, not nurse, sorry. But I guess it's not the time for semantics. Alright, Mr. Akira. Real, are you ready? Let's get real. <laughs> Just know that I can only give you my medical opinion. Don't expect anything else from me. That's all I need. Alright, let's get the show on the road. Um. Oh. Wait. Okay. Burns on his face appear to be especially severe. There appear to be several second degree and third degree burns. However, there's little soot in the mouth and no edema. There seems to be almost no airway burns. Can, can she tell the airway burns? Like that? Do you mean he lost consciousness before the fire reached his throat? He's probably in a state of shock rather than losing consciousness due to a lack of oxygen. In any case, his airways have not been burned. I see. Like, uh, the pose he's in is typical for burn victims apparently. I learned that in LA Noir. The burns on his arms appear to be particularly severe. They're all third degree burns. Some doctors would even describe them as fourth degree burns. Some parts of the skin appear to be completely charred. His arms are bent in a strange way. They look like that because the heat deformed the muscle protein. For example, raw meat shrinks when you grate it, right? Same thing. It's good to know. My legs takes more than before. Uh, shouldn't it be the other way around? His clothes are also burnt quite badly. Were they made of flammable material? They appear to be terribly burned. Even if so, they shouldn't have caught fire like that. A flammable liquid must have been poured on them. But they don't smell like gasoline. Hmm. Can you still smell gasoline after it, after it has been burned off something? Need to keep my head on straight. Top of his trousers are relatively unburned, but I can't find any evidence in his pockets. Should look elsewhere. Burns on his legs are particularly bad. All skin color is gone. They're almost charred. Wouldn't have happened if... Only because his clothes caught fire. It's as if he committed suicide by burning himself to death. The fact that the degrees of burns vary by body part also bothers me. 
Makes me want to turn my face away. Lifted, he lost consciousness and did not suffer. Why did his clothes burn like that? Burns on his legs. Could the violent fire have started from below? Why did his clothes burn like that? His vase is broken. Vase. Did it fall when he caught fire? Ah, that flower vase. They were very lovely flowers. And burned to a crisp. There's almost nothing left of them. Wonder where such a severe fire could have come from. Certainly strange. Covered with suit. Thomas. Oh, there's oh, okay, something here, of course. Huh? Thomas's wallet. There's something in it. Something to tell you, return to your room five minutes after everyone has gathered for lunch. We'll talk about this there, Sir Raymond. Ooh, we got called out. Singled out as well. Yeah! Oy, oy, oy. Um, although some parts have been burned, I can still make it out. It's a simple message. Looks like someone wanted to kill Thomas. They lured him here with this note. So Raymond might have been a killer or someone else. Something else here? Quarantine level 3. Same kind of card as the one Roy Higgins had. Unfortunately, it appears that the fire badly damaged the IC chip. It's probably not usable anymore. Quarantine level. I have a bad feeling about this. Does this mean there's such a place on this island? It could be hidden there. Huh? Her oh, one. Quarantine zone. I think I've been able to make sense of the situation. Let's put all these facts together. First, the cause of death. How did he die? Asphyxiation or shock from the burns? Has to be one of the two. Burns are particularly severe on the arms and legs, but relatively minor on his face and the rest of his body. Basically, it is a full body burn, but not to the same degree in all places. There are no fire traces in this corridor, and there is nothing here that can cause burns. That's really a mystery, isn't it? How could he catch fire in a stone passage? Did he really get burnt here, or did he move here afterward? I don't think that had ha that had that that happened. Sorry, judging from the burn mark severity and the absence of airway burns, he could have only been moved a few inches. I see, and because he's extremely heavy, it's also unlikely that he was carried here. The mystery deepens. How could Thomas have suffered such burns here? It's almost as if someone used a flamethrower on him. It's certainly strange. Burned to death somewhere without fire. At any rate, considering everything, this is unlikely to have been an accident. There's no fire in this area, and the lightning strike could not have caused this. Lightning could have done this. Intense flames definitely caught this. We also have to consider that this was a suicide. We don't know the reason why he killed himself, but it could be a suicide. He could have committed suicide by dousing himself with gasoline. What about the latter? Someone lured Thomas here. So with that in mind, we can narrow this down to one explanation. This is a murder. M murder? You only get it now? I can't believe it. Who would do such a thing and why? Who did this? Why and how? Those are the questions. Questions, rather, and I'll have to find the answers. The killer's not found, then. In any case, this has become a very dangerous situation. We all should be careful. Whoever killed Thomas is definitely still on this island. Uh, what the? I immediately look around, star startling real who is standing next to me. Where's that voice coming from? What? Thomas is still alive! Breathing again! How, how can he still be alive? He's breathing at all! Real's face turns pale and she backs away. Turn my eyes towards real. Even if a miracle happened, Thomas can't survive in this condition. I look at real, trying to get an answer. Real, with an expression of fear on her face, replies to me by shaking her head. Approach Thomas. Hey Thomas, don't worry, the burns are not as bad as you think. Are you kidding me? We, you should rest, we'll go get to the bottom of this. Thomas mutters with a voice that sounds like someone's lost last breath. Inga Reitmant. Reitmant. Frightened? Stammering sounds delirious. Hold my ear next to his mouth, but that's all I can hear. All that remains is a faint breathing sound. He eventually stops breathing. That has to be horrible. A few moments later, Regal checks Thomas's pupillary reflexes. Tries to check his breathing and pulse, but eventually she meets my gaze. He's gone. For real this time. So sorry, I should have checked him more thoroughly. Jumped to conclusions too quickly. Thought there was no way he could still have been alive. I mean, I tapped him all over and didn't notice. You did a good job, Regal. Everyone would have assumed the same in the situation. Thomas was no longer breathing when I arrived. 
also thought that he was already dead. Don't let it get you. Thanks for trying to make me feel better, but I still failed as a doctor. After a short moment of silence, the other side of the door becomes noisy. Did something happen? Is everybody alright? Vincent and Abby show up. They sure took their sweet time. Explain the situation to Vincent. And that's what happened. Since this has happened, I would like you to tell me... Oh no, I would like you to let me use a communication device to make contact with the mainland. I understand. There's a long distance transmitter in the mansion. I will take it there. All the way back on the left side is our communication room. In there you can communicate with Alaska through Unalaska. What? Looks like someone has already was already a step ahead of us. Equipment has been destroyed beyond repair. This is strange. How were they able to destroy it without anyone noticing it? I have a bad feeling about this. Vincent. Is there any other communication equipment? Unfortunately, there is not. This is the only communication equipment in Louis Associate. However, it will be possible to communicate when the ship returns. Which means I cannot make any contact until then. I need to find out who destroyed this transmitter. Vincent, when was the last time you saw it in working order? Have you heard any suspicious sounds in here? I checked the transmitter shortly after everyone arrived on the island. I used it to communicate with the ship. I do not recall hearing any strange noises in here. After we arrived, this means that anyone could have destroyed it if they didn't care about the risk of being found. Pardon my interruption, but I just discovered that the glass on the back door has been broken. Could it be that whoever destroyed the transmitter also broke the glass? Glass on the back door? Abby, could you take me there, please? Certainly, this way. Oh. Huh. Oh. It has been broken from the outside since the pieces of glass are lying inside. As Abby said, the glass on the door has been broken. Did someone smash the glass to open the door? It's a bit strange though. Would anyone be foolish enough to trespass on this isolated island? Even if anyone would trespass, what does it mean? Abby, are there any places on this island where someone could be hiding? There's a cabin near the port. Can't think of anywhere besides the cabin that is more safe from the harsh weather. Hmm. If there's a trespasser, what could their intentions be? I really don't know. Any case, I'd like to meet Sir Raymond and discuss this with him. Would that be possible? Our oh, master? That is... I will take you to his room. However, I do not know if he will be there. It's fine. Please show the way. Very well. Please follow me. You will find an elevator on your right. It will take you to the upper floors. So Raymond's living quarters are on the fourth floor. Hmm? Considering what has happened, why hasn't Sir Raymond shown himself yet? He's a rather fickle person. It is not unusual for him to disappear like this. Even if he does disappear, this is a solitary island in the middle of the ocean, so he has to be somewhere in this mansion. I would really like to meet him. 